You're jetting off abroad for a vacation and you call yourself a wife. You must be joking. But it's not a vacation. I'm attending a wedding ceremony. Shut up. You're married. You shouldn't leave the house. Do you want a divorce? The person relentlessly railing at me is none other than my husband. Since when did my gentleman turn into a guy like this? Being restricted from attending my best friend's wedding feels like being a slave. With a life like this, I had reached my limit. Look forward to it, okay? I'll send you straight to hell in no time. My name is Emily, and I'm 29. I leveraged my experience working part-time in a clothing store during my student days and became an independent entrepreneur two years ago. I opened an online boutique that sells clothes and accessories. Shortly before starting my own line, I married my boyfriend, Nick. It was thanks to him that I was able to start my own business. In the beginning, I struggled to get my business on track and fell down many times. Nevertheless, I managed to overcome it all, all thanks to Nick. Every time I faced a challenge, he would always say with a smile, Emily, you'll be fine. Even if things are hard now, there will surely come a time when you'll succeed. I hope so, but if things don't get better, I will even be a burden to you, Nick. Don't worry about it. I want to support you, Emily, and I want to be there for you. But I would earn better if I got employed like I used to. You always said you wanted your own shop, Emily, didn't you? That dream has come true now. I'm here right by your side, so let's try a little harder together. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, Nick. I'll do my best. With the support of my husband, I decided to continue running my shop. I took full advantage of social media for marketing to get more exposure online. Thanks to that, I managed to significantly increase the number of customers. My target base is of a wide age range, so I have a large number of users. Everything is done online, so I don't have to pay rent or labor costs. Above all, I can do it alongside housework at home, so I can continue working without feeling overwhelmed. Things are stable now, and I earn a decent income. Although my business took off, there was one thing bothering me. It was that my husband was becoming more and more indifferent towards me day by day. As my business did better, I felt his words and actions becoming colder. I think it all started over something simple. A few months ago, the sales from the previous month had finally reached my target. I was so happy, and at the same time, my feeling of gratitude for my husband grew even deeper. That night, I immediately brought up the news to my husband, who had just returned from work. Nick, listen. Emily, what's the matter? You seem in such a hurry. I finally did it. I hit my sales target for last month. You set your goal pretty high, didn't you? Yes, we've been pretty close for a while. But I finally hit the target last month. Thanks to you for supporting me. Thank you. Ah, good for you. I'm tired today. I'm going to take a shower and go to bed. After leaving his bag on the sofa and leaving the living room, my husband went to sleep without even eating the dinner I had prepared. What happened? He'd been so supportive, so I thought he'd be thrilled. But his reaction was lukewarm at best. Was he just really tired? I had expected us to celebrate together, so my husband's response came as a surprise. That said, there's no way I could force my tired husband to be happy. From then on, his demeanor towards me gradually grew colder each day. At first, I thought it was just because he was tired or not in the mood, but as this went on for weeks, even I started to feel uncomfortable. Before I knew it, he started looking down on me at every opportunity. Whenever I was on my computer, he'd stand behind me, sneering while peeking at the screen. What? Checking your sales? Trying to brag or something? What are you talking about? I have no such intentions, Nick. You peeked at the screen yourself. Huh. What kind of wife stays on her laptop when her husband's home? What are you trying to show off, saying I'm so busy with work or something? It's not like that. You've been so cold to me lately, Nick. Did I do something wrong? Despite being shocked by my husband's cold attitude, I still asked him about his true feelings. Then he sighed with an air of annoyance and blurted out, Phew, it's exhausting. I come home tired from work, and why do I have to deal with someone so emotional? Emotional? Why do you always speak like that? I just wanted to share some good news with you because I've been trying hard, and you've always supported me. That's what pisses me off about you. I couldn't care less about your sales. Instead of getting excited about such things, try improving your housekeeping skills a bit. Hey, there's no need to talk like that. What I'm saying is right, isn't it? Quit showing off how busy you are with work. Do it again, and I'm out of here. Got it? 
Being told such things by my beloved husband, my mind was in turmoil for a moment, my heart filled with emptiness, and before I knew it, a tear was trickling down my cheek. Instead of apologizing, he had a sneering smile on his face, a demonic smile I had never seen before. I was taken aback by my husband, who could show such an expression without hesitation. From that day on, his attitude only worsened. I was no longer allowed to speak freely as I used to, and I always had to walk on eggshells around him. Then, one day, I found a wedding invitation for my best friend in our mailbox. I went to middle school and high school with Elena, and we've always been close. We kept in touch regularly even after we became adults. When she got married, I remember being excited as if I were the one who got married. Now she's abroad with her husband, and the invitation said the ceremony would take place overseas. I've been stressed about my husband, so this was great news to me. It felt like a ray of light drew into my oppressive daily life. I was thinking of when to tell my husband about this. Before I could bring it up, my husband found the invitation on the table. Hey, what's this? He read through the invitation and approached me with a clearly sour expression. What do you mean? It's clearly a wedding invitation. It's from my best friend, Elena. But this is taking place abroad. You're not going, right? Ha. Huh. Of course I'm going. As I said that, my husband slammed his hand on the table with a devilish look on his face. He let out a deep voice I'd never heard before. You've got to be kidding me. While I'm working my butt off day in, day out, you're just lounging around at home on the computer, and you're planning on skipping housework again just because of a wedding. No, you've got it wrong. That's not it. I just want to attend Elena's wedding. Shut up. We're married. You shouldn't leave the house. Do you want to get a divorce? Being so casually threatened with divorce, I froze on the spot. He continued his tirade mercilessly. I feel bad for your best friend too. If you're only using her wedding as an excuse to leave home and not to celebrate her marriage. What are you saying? It's my best friend's wedding. I'm attending only because I want to celebrate it. Just what's so hard to understand. Oh, you're so annoying. Quit being so cocky because your business took off. It's your attitude that ticks me off. When will you get it? Huh. My husband shouted at me, our noses nearly touching. Overcome with fear, my legs gave way beneath me. Seemingly amused by my reaction, he said, Look, you should be grateful I married a woman like you. You were lucky your business took off, and it was only because of my support. Now shut up and just do as I say. With that, he shoved the wedding invitation into the trash can. The moment he did that, I felt my blood rush back into my body. At this point, I was so infuriated that it would have been an understatement to say that my blood was boiling. He had not only thrown away my dear friend's invitation but also insulted my feelings. I was so bitter I realized I had unconsciously bitten my lip hard. Unforgivable. Who does he take me for? Just because he hates me doesn't mean he can do whatever he wants. I am not his slave and being his wife does not make me his possession. If my days are going to continue like this, I might as well be the one to ruin it all. I don't care. I'm attending Elena's wedding no matter what. Without resisting, I bided my time until the wedding, carefully making preparations for my overseas trip so he wouldn't find out. On the day of departure, my silent obedience seemed to have paid off, and he had already forgotten about the wedding. Before leaving for work, he nagged at me as usual at the front door. Don't skip your chores today. Make sure dinner is ready. Don't you ever go against me, okay? I know. Have a good day. Phew, you got it easy, don't you? You get to lounge around at home every day. I wish we could switch places. Yeah, I was the one who pushed you to have your own line. I wish you were more grateful. Maybe I'll cut back my contribution to the household expenses from next month. It doesn't make sense for me to be the only one struggling. Mumbling such things, my husband left the house. Suppressing the urge to talk back, I patiently waited until he was out of sight. Once I confirmed that Nick was on his way to the station, I immediately began my preparations. I grabbed the suitcase I had prepared in advance, called a cab, and headed for the airport. I then took a flight to meet Elena. When I arrived at the destination she had booked for me, my phone rang. It was my husband. He must have realized that I was gone immediately after returning from work. As soon as I picked up the call, he began to yell. Hey Emily, where are you? Without even having dinner ready? I'm at Elena's wedding. What a wedding. I told you not to go. You broke your promise. I never said I wouldn't go, and I don't remember making such a promise. Don't mess with me. 
I've disciplined you over and over not to leave home. You're my wife, after all. Disciplined? What are you talking about? That's just you forcing me to put up with your selfish expectations. Perhaps angered by my defiant attitude, he yelled. That's it. We're getting a divorce. Look, if you don't want that, come back home now. Got it. Without waiting for my response, he hung up the phone. No matter what he says, I don't care because my mind is already made up. After my best friend's wedding, I spent a full day sightseeing before returning to the States. I arrived home prepared to have a talk with my husband, but he was nowhere to be found. On the table was a divorce paper. He had already signed it, and that wasn't it. My computer for work was completely smashed. By leaving the divorce papers and breaking my computer, he was probably trying to get back at me. There was not a shred of love left for him and me. I signed the divorce papers on the table and packed my things into my suitcase again. I took the divorce papers and headed to my parents' house. On my way there, I stopped by the city hall and submitted my divorce papers. When I arrived at my parents' house, I told them everything that happened. My parents were surprised at first, but their faces hardened as they listened. If Nick were there, my father would have definitely punched him. As I was relaxing at my parents' house, which I hadn't visited for a long time, my phone rang. It was a call from my husband. I didn't expect him to call this soon. I answered the phone without flinching. Hello. It's been a while, Emily. You're back in the country, huh? I got back today. So what? You're cold, huh? Oh, maybe you were shocked that I filed for divorce, huh? Huh? My husband seemed to think I was grieving. He continued in a condescending tone, which was noticeable even over the phone. Relax, I'm not serious either. I just wanted you to reflect on yourself, so I gave you a little scare. Reflect on myself. What for? You went abroad without my permission and had the time of your life. Had the time of my life? I just attended Elena's wedding. You're still persistent. That's what I mean by having the time of your life, leaving your husband behind, abandoning your housework, and going on an overseas trip. You're disqualified as a wife, you little. Enough already. Who do you think you are? Just because we're married, just because you're my husband, you think you have the right to control everything I do. What, Emily? Enough is enough. In the end, you just can't stand that I'm successful at work, right? You don't like having a wife who earns more than you. You're such a deadbeat. It's pathetic to be jealous of your wife. If it bothers you, go ahead and make more than I do. Emily, did you just say that? I'm seriously gonna break up with you. Go ahead. In fact, we're already divorced. What? I filed for divorce. There's no way I can continue being married to a piece of trash like you. Just so you know, if you think you can break me with such threats, you got it wrong. I'm not gonna let you manipulate me. Don't ever show me that disgusting face of yours again, you jerk. He must have been shocked by my harsh words. He fell silent, so I said goodbye and hung up the phone. Afterward, I hired a lawyer and billed him for the desktop he destroyed. Moreover, the text and voicemail messages came in handy. His attempts to control my actions and his constant verbal abuse were proven, and I was able to collect damages. As a result, his savings dwindled and he was left in debt. His parents refused to help him, saying it was his own doing, and he ended up having to borrow money from loan sharks. Now he's stuck in a vicious cycle of borrowing to pay off debt, wandering in hell. He was never a high flyer, and I heard that he made mistake after mistake at work, eventually being sidelined. On the other hand, I've been living at my parents' home since the divorce. Thankfully, my current job doesn't tie me to a particular location. I can continue my peaceful life at home, and my parents are happy to have me stay with them. This lifestyle will likely continue for a while. Marriage isn't the only way to happiness. The most important thing is to have a family that cares for you. I've come to realize this once again.